Strikey Scorpion 82 is sponsored by Warhammer Combat Cards. Now updated to include all 40k factions, including Imperial Knights, Chaos Knights, and the leagues of Votan, Warhammer Combat Cards is bigger and better than ever before. Inspired by the original Citadel Combat Cards, masterminded by the veteran Games Workshop designer Jervis Johnson, Warhammer Combat Cards is a digital card game featuring your favourite miniatures from the 40k universe. Build your very own collection of combat cards and assemble a deck that brings the full might of your chosen warlord to bear. Clash with rivals, join events and battle your friends across the galaxy in fearsome tactical turn-based combat. Warhammer Combat Cards is free to download and play on Apple and Android smartphones. Use the link in the video description below and begin your path to epic glory and victory. Thanks and enjoy the game. Right, welcome to this 2000 points game of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition. A uh, little bit delayed, but it's here. Uh, brand new codex for the tower. So highly experimental game for them. And we're going to pitch them against the orcs. So a classic showdown uh, here. Double Xenos uh, armies facing off against each other. So big thank you to everyone that supports us on membership and Patreon. Uh, it's gold level Patreons, I'll call out their names at some point during the game. They get the Patronic gold level dice to use at some critical point during the battle. Silver level Patreons, I'll call out their names at the end of the battle. And you can check out the end credits of all the Patreons supporting us, including those supporting at bronze. So a massive thank you to everyone that does. And you can support us uh, just by following the Patreon link in the video description below. And then a big thank you to everyone that supports us on YouTube channel membership as well. It really does. Uh, maybe we can keep the channel going. So, 2,000 points of Tau. This will be a Kingslayer game as well. Uh, the Tau have already lost their commander. Uh, there's no spoilers for the Kingslayer games. Probably a good number already uh, here this season. Each side picks a king or a main character to run uh, through the season, see if they can survive through uh, to the end of the year. Uh, but the Tau have lost theirs already. Commander Ghost Tide's uh, been hacked down already. Gut Ripper, though. Uh, remains elusive, he's still alive, uh, and so in this game the, the Tower of a Chance uh, to bring him down in this Kingslayer game. So we'll see if they can do it, but anyway, experimentation time with the Tower. I think their Codex has taken a few knocks, but it's uh, I think a case of, of new tactics, new combinations for units for sure. So going to run this as a Montcar detachment to try some out here something different we'll see how the detachment works it looks pretty good we'll give it a go here in this game in no particular order double hammerhead long strike scones just two regular hammerheads two seeker missiles in each smart missile systems and the dreaded rail gun so uh, running uh, two of those here in this game then i've allocated the leaders to their units already so we do have fast sight here He's buried in amongst this unit. He's been kindly lent to us by one of the Phoenix Lords. So, Longbow BB. I'm going to pick up this model very carefully. Just to show you. It's been painted up by him. He'll be the leader here for this game. It's appropriate against the Orcs, but there he is. So, nice paint job. And he's going to get a bodyguard unit to fight alongside him here in this game. So that's the HQ. Uh, bodyguard is a squad of three. I wish you could take units of six now, but you can only take uh, one of the quirks of the new codex is you can only go to maximum size of three uh, in the squad. Now you should be able to take sixes, but you can't. But it's a squad of three out uh, of those. So it's the fire knife configuration. I've gone for the double plasma on each of those models. There's a little bit of uh, leeway to, to swap uh, war gear around. So we've dropped one of the missile pods and then just gone for the double plasma on each of those models. Uh, one of the models taking uh, a marker drone and shield drone, and then the other two taking double uh, shield drones for each of them. So, and we'll watch of interest to see how these different combinations work here. Moving across, I've got another Crisis Battlesuit team. Uh, this one is the Sunforge option. So with those, you get double Fusion Blaster for each of those. You do get the 4 plus Invulnerable save uh, quite crucially as well. Uh, same loadout for the drones, so one of the models taking a uh, shield drone markup drone, and then the others taking double uh, shield drones for each of them. Then taking a it's commander ghost tide here, but going as a cold star commander. Coordinated exploitation enhancement being granted to him. 
as and then the loadout is quad fusion blaster just checking that it's i think i can you can swap out the original weapon the uh, burst cannon for a fusion blaster and then you can take up to three more options which you can take duplicates and so i can i reckon take three more fusion blasters so quad fusion blaster which is going back to his original loadout uh, that's how i used to run him so we'll see how he works uh, in that squad but just uh, the squad to protect him he'll enhance the squad is the idea uh, with him so then I've got another same configuration here, so the Double Fusion Blaster, uh, Crisis Battlesuit Team, uh, the Sunforge option, so a squad of three, same with the drones, uh, but no leader to go with those. We then have Broadside, it's got a lone broadside across here, uh, with the Seeker Missile, Smart Missile Systems, and the High Yield Missile Pods, uh, Marker Drone, Shield Drone being taken for him. Then a squad of three with the Heavy Rail Rifles, the Twin Plasma Rifles, uh, and then a Seeker Missile being taken for each of those. Uh, and then with the drones, one marker drone in the squad with a shield drone and the other two models taking double uh, shield drones. Stealth team, squad of three, fusion, bla fusion blaster in the squad. Marker drone, shield drone uh, for the drone options. Then three strike teams, one, two and three, all taking pulse rifles. And the loadout for that is marker drone and guardian drone being taken for each of those squads so that's the list here for the tower this orc force hits like a brick and moves quick so the tower will need to gun down targets and clear areas fast in this battle so there'll be pressure so we want this to happen we want pressure on their firepower uh, to see how efficient it can be in this experimental game there'll be lessons to be learnt for sure but it'll help the towers they forge uh, and rework a force in the light of the new codex as we'll take a look at the other force just before we come to that there's a little bit of an announcement the uh, objective markers these are back and available once again it's been a while it's been a couple of years actually but these are available so the prints on acrylic we do sets of six of these. They're 40 millimeters across, so they're perfect to use as objective markers for your games of 40K. Uh, link for them in the video description below. It'll take you to the Etsy store, and uh, we can ship those to you wherever you are across the world. But sets of six of those are now available, so if you're looking for collectible objective markers, uh, then these are back in stock once again. All right, so uh, that's the tower list. Phoenix Swords and Autarchs have been allocated. That's the top two levels of support on YouTube channel membership. So for Autarchs, we allocate them to individual models for all of our games. I've taken a few here. I've drafted them across as bodyguard models uh, for uh, Farsight here in this game. So that's Ben Harris, uh, Sam Hermes, and Dylan Moore. They've gone to the three Crisis Battlesuit team members across here. Uh, the rest are uh, Phoenix Lord members here so that's whole units for all of our games something sneaky jp put him onto the stealth team for this battle good number of tower players here uh we've put long strike by request onto his own model here onto farsight for this game uh, then we have Marfisto at the back here solid unit of broadsides the lone broadside Val and field marshal robert nate miller uh, onto commander ghost tide for this battle uh, then Phoenix Lord Unit, Gut B, onto the Crisis Battlesuit team. BBP Wargaming onto the other squad, that's for the Fusion Guns, both of those teams there. And then onto the Hammerheads for this battle, Michael Fryer and Vagabond onto this one here at the front. That's the list here for the Tower. We'll take a look now and see what the Orcs have in their list. So, spoiler alert, as this is the list that smashed the Adeptus Mechanicus, steamroll it over them. Their firepower is not good enough to stop the Orcs. Uh, this infamous double-pronged spearhead attack uh, led by the double war boss seems to work really well uh, here. So you'll see that as well. So what happens in this game here against the Tau. Hopefully Tau firepower might be able to blunt the attack, but we'll see. Mike Walker will take command. Uh, he seems to enjoy using the Orcs and, and uses them well enough uh, here. So in no particular order, uh, we have a regular war boss here, Gut Ripper. Super Cyborg Body being taken for him. Then we have uh, Grog the Whopper, so it's War Boss in Mega Armor. Head Whopper's Kill Chopper Enhancement being given to him. Uh, it's going to run this model here, it's Cousin Zog. Uh, it's going to run him as Death Killer Wartrack uh, for this game. 
he'll join the bikers. Squad of six of those. Then three squads of boys, one, two, inside truck transports. And then a third squad, which there should be enough room to put them inside the battle wagon. Uh, squads of ten, and then each knob taking a power claw. Two squads of five storm boys, just for menial tasks like secondaries and so on. Uh, a battle wagon uh, with a death roll on the front, as you can see, taking the yard case uh, option with that as well. Three death copters uh, with their copter rockets. Squad of ten regular knobs, all taking power claws for those. Then a Gorkonaut is in the list as well. This Orkham is big enough, but a Gorkonaut uh, is there as well. It's, we've called it uh, Ripper's Little Helper. But the idea is that he can disappear inside that. Its transport capacity is excellent now, so we can put him right into the belly of the beast. Squad of five Mega Knobs as all taking power claws for those. And then finally it's Mech Guns. So three of those individuals, so squads of one, one, two, and three of those all taking the custom Mega Cannons. So that's the list for the Orcs. Phoenix Swords and Autarchs have been allocated. So for Autarchs, again, Bodyguard Duty, we've put them over onto the Mega Knobs uh, here for this game. So Casper Kempf, Ite Miara, Midnight Miniatures, and Mike James. We've put those uh, onto these models here. So their job will be to protect Grog and Awapa, one of the war bosses in this battle. Then for Phoenix Lords, uh, so that's whole units. Amy Almo to take command of the whole squad uh, here for the Mega Knobs. We've got Andrew Swan uh, driving the battle wagon here in this game. Then he's just painted up a model for his own collection. Chris Kamiski is an orc player, so we've put him onto Grog Dwapper here uh, as a, a nod to him for painting up this model for his own collection. So he's in charge of Grog Dwapper for this battle. Uh, Ray Cross uh, onto uh, Gut Ripper, so it's Ripper Ray. And I've stuck the marker on the forehead of the squig here in this, in this game. I'm not sure the, the animal will appreciate that. Then we've got Ben Shaw. Uh, so it's Biker Ben here in this game. Put him over onto Zog. He'll join the bikers. And then a couple more. We have uh, Paint Lickers Paint Pot has gone onto uh, the Gorkonaut for this battle. And then finally Lucas Brown onto the Death Copters. So that's the list here for the Orcs. Always a classic, this one. I had Orcs ferociously fighting against the Tau. Tau need to be dynamic. They need to be blistering with their firepower. Uh, the Orcs just need to stick to their plan. If they can execute it well, uh, they'll stamp this Tau force into the ground. So we'll take a look at scenario and deployment next for this 2,000 points game. So we have a scenario for this battle, it's called Vital Ground. The deployment zone is a Dawn of War, so we're fighting at, across the board here in this game. Tower deployment zone, uh, next to their fallen comrades, I think it's appropriate, but uh, deploying behind the line of orange dice. Then across the other side, uh, behind the line of green dice, will be Mike's deployment zone for the Orcs. Uh, supply lines is the mission role, if you hold your home objective, at the start of your command phase, you can pick up a CP on a 4+. Plus. And then five objectives on the board. There's one dead centre. It's actually tucked into the corner of that terrain piece, just the other side. You can see it just tucked in there. So that's dead centre in the board. There's a home objective each. This one here for the tower, just the other side of this ruin. And then for the orcs, you can maybe see it through the gap. It's just over there. And there's two more no man's land objectives, one on each flank. One on the tower, left-hand flank here in the open street, and then come around the other side. Just at the back of the statue here is the other, that's on the tower, right-hand flank. It's a nice spread of objectives across the board. Uh, for vital ground, turn two onwards. If you control the objective marker in your own deployment zone, you get two victory points. If you control uh, any of the, or for each of the no man's land objectives, it's worth five points a time. And if you control the opponent's home objective, uh, it is worth six victory points. That's uh, in the command phase, turn two onwards. So for this game, uh, and with terrain, we're going to try and spread the obscuring terrain just to assist both sides here, but really to help out uh, the orcs just make things fair enough and to give the tower the challenge. So for obscuring terrain, uh, this piece here, I'm just playing the hard edge uh, here for this, this piece here, then spanning across to the other one. 
uh, so those two. Uh, the, the whole of this ruin, so a pretty good size uh, chunk there, and then this ruin on the left hand side. Uh, there's some regular uh, ruins here across the board, uh, some tank traps and accessories uh, as well, but that's pretty much it uh, here for terrain. Uh, in this game. Both of us are going to go for the random draw on secondary, so I think we're ready now to start alternating place units on the board. Next. Right, just to mention the batter mat and terrain that we're using in this game. So batter mats from gamemat.eu. 6 by 4 inside, just mark the edge uh, here with these pipes for this game. You can get this batter mat, uh, it's called the chem zone uh, batter mat, you can get this one in the 60 by 44 inches for your regular games of 10th edition. Also using uh, the Fallout Zone terrain set. So I've taken two of those sets and combined them together to fill out this board completely uh, here for this game. So you can check out gamemat.eu for your supplies of batter mats. Also pre-painted terrain sets available from them as well. Link in the video description below. You'll also find an 11% discount, discount code that you can use across the store. All right, so deployment's done for both sides. Mike's just placing his last unit, which is a unit of bikes, which have been joined by Zog and on the Death Killer War Track. So we'll cover the tower first of all. Uh, it looks like orcs have amassed over on Mike's right hand side or onto the tower left. Uh, but that was later on in deployment. So towers uh, just going for more of a spread here, focusing perhaps on the, the home objective of a good number of units. The hammerheads, they're just regular hammerheads now. There's no need uh, and no bonus of them hanging around together. So split them up, hammerhead on this side, and uh, then the other hammerhead on the right hand side of the board. Uh, strike team, fire warrior squad across here, then coming across to the middle, broadside team with the heavy rail rifles anchoring the objective and fields of fire looking across in two different directions, uh, strike team on the objective as well, uh, stealth team just anchoring here, orcs are going to come through like a torrent so we're going to hold them back and try and make the most of those, uh, there is the spare broadside across here, just the low model with the high yield missile pods looking down uh, this roadway uh, is ready to shoot to the oncoming orcs and then the third and final unit of fire warriors on top of the building perhaps they think being higher up will keep them out of trouble uh, from the orcs gone heavy on reserves here so we've put all the crisis battlesuit teams into reserve uh, the squad with the double fusion blasters with no character support as then ghost tide with the double fusion blaster squad into reserve uh, and then Farsight himself with his team as well. So that's great, the tower gets deep strike in, but they've got to hold off until turn two for that. If Orcs go first, ugh, they'll get two whole turns before you can bring that stuff on. So that could be problematic. But we'll see. Deployment for the Orcs, they have spread across, but towards the end of Mike's deployment, he then lumped... Uh, the heavier stuff on the side he intends to swing around, the heavier side of the door uh, as it swings. So first of all, on the left-hand side, uh, the bikers, they've been joined by the Death Killer War Track. Uh, the guns positioned at the corners of these buildings, ready to lend some firepower support. So one gun here, this one on the objective and poking around the corner. Uh, this one virtually on the objective and then poke around the corner as well. Sheltering the copters, the tower may well go after that orc firepower, so Mike's just tucked them in there. And, and then packed full of orcs ready to fight is the Gorkonaut uh, and the battle wagon. So both prongs for now uh, together at this stage uh, and then joined by two units of boys inside their truck transports. Mike Scott reserves, uh, all these are inside their transportation and then the two squads of five uh, storm boys ready to deep strike in. Uh, useful strategic assets, especially for picking up secondaries. So that's deployment done. Tower a little bit nervous, I guess, with the the time gap for our reserves to arrive. But well, this is all about experimenting with units and strategy and so on. I think the Orcs is the perfect combination uh, to test this new codex. We're both Xenos filth, one technically superior to the other. Ah, four. We go first. We'll take that for sure to try and soften up this Orc force because it has a, before it has a chance to move. We're going to the first turn of the game. Now the Tower Empire with their new codex will go first.
so turn one for the tower cards drawn behind enemy lines and assassination so both of those cards are not much use to us at the first uh, stage of the game so really the aim of the game i think for the tower uh, will be to cause damage and destroy targets from range that'll uh, be useful for us it might be quite tedious to watch just the tower picking off targets if they can uh, but it's a work that must be done if they're to stand a chance in the middle and later stages of this game. So we're running Montcard Detachment here. It's long awaited for the tower. Uh, the main rule for that is for turns 1, 2 and 3. Uh, and again, it's another reason why holding off reserves until turn 2. But but anyway, it's lethal hits across the board. So we've got to bear that in mind. Uh, forgive us if we forget, or I forget at times. But it's lethal hits across the board for those three turns. And uh, if I can also get guided units, then I can uh, get assault keyword on my shooting uh, as well. So that's the main rule. There's a couple of tasty stratagems to try out. Uh, and then I've one enhancement, so I'll just call out the rules for that. Uh, it's on my uh, commander, Commander Ghost Tide, here for this game. And it's uh, coordinated exploitation, town pie model only. Whilst the bearer is leading the unit, each time the unit is an observer unit. Until the end of the phase, range weapons equipped by models in their guided unit have the sustained hits of one. So a little bit of bonus uh, for shooting for the guided unit. Yeah, it's just to clarify. So that means that he'll need to guide a unit, say it's these, and they'll get sustained hits. But we'll see how it works out. Uh, there may be enhancement to perhaps move around in a future list here. We'll go on to movement phase here. We'll start moving some units uh, here for the tower. And one more home objective. So we could uh, do a nice tasty CP, which we do. Four plus for a command point. All right, so movement done. Tower just trying to be as sensible as possible and maneuver themselves uh, into good lines of fire. There's some good angles already, especially for these. They can see through to targets uh, down that corridor. You can also see across the ruin here, uh, through this gap, and we've actually got a line of sight towards both of those trucks over there. So plenty of targets lined up uh, for these. Mike has made good use of this large obscuring terrain. Uh, so the Gorkonaut and the Battle Wagon will be sheltered from their firepower. Also from this hammerhead, but it's shifted across. It's swung over to here. Uh, really, only targets it can go after uh, is the guns. The warriors have moved up and can perhaps get a few shots off against the bikes. I want to use these as an uh, observer unit, so I've pulled them away across here and line of sight down in this direction. And the hammerhead's moved across to put some firepower down here and then hold stationary with these two units. That's movement done. Uh, we'll now go on to shooting phase next. So start the shooting phase. We've played a stratagem. It has to be done at the start of the shooting phase. Uh, so it's focused fire. It's only one CP. Uh, so two time high units from your army. So I've picked uh, this hammerhead across here and also this broadside. Uh, you then pick an enemy unit. So I've picked the battle wagon across there and it's next drapey minus one. Uh, when if and when the damage comes through so I think it's worth it, it may well help him out a little bit uh, as we try and soften up if not destroy that target so that's done we'll uh, pick some units here for uh, shooting so we're going to go with firepower from these I'm going to go with the warriors on top they're going to act as the spotting unit we're going to spot the battle wagon and they're going to guide as this hammerhead across here we're going to unleash everything we have so that's going to be the rail gun and the two seeker missiles and we'll commit this to a friend here so i might stack this up with the michael fryer dice there he is michael fryer on the michael fryer just as we kick off here with the very first shot from the new flashy tower codex it's like opening a fresh product we shall hit on a Starting on a four, ballistic skills been pushed up by one uh, because of marker lighting, so we're on threes. So threes to hit, and then uh, armor hunter. Each time this model makes attack target response to a vehicle, it's plus one to hit rolls. Looking at twos. And a six, and that's a lethal hit, I remembered. <laughs> so mem memory's been tested straight away. So that just goes, goes straight through. Ah, kind of weird. Because that cuts out me. Devastating wounds opportunity. Mm -hmm. If I had a rolled, <laughs> would have got devastating wounds. Okay, so the buff comes with a, a downside. So it goes straight through. Uh, so you're on taping minus five. 
extra minus one because of stress, so maybe minus six. We're saying there is cover as we shoot through, so it's minus five. So. Unless there's a seven on the six sided dice, I don't get a It's not good. And there's no invite. Mike's refrained from calling the wild because there's no kind of uh, five plus <laughs> invulnerable save kicking around. All right. So. Oh, it's an invulnerable save of a six plus. All right, take it. Yeah. Don't. Oh, close. Close. Okay. Right. So we're going to look for damage here. D6 plus six. A three. All right. So not too bad. Nine wounds caused. That'll bite a chunk out of that vehicle for mm -hmm. sure. I won't destroy it. It's still very much alive. Yeah, but it's a nice plum hit. Okay. Good shooting. Uh, we'll now go to the two uh, missiles here. The seeker missiles. They're going to start on fours as well. So looking at twos. Okay, both hits come through. And do you know what? We're strength 14. Reason? Yeah, three to wind. God, it's brilliant strength on that thing. Three to wind. Uh, we'll use our built in, our other ability, which is called targeting array. You can reroll, hit roll, wind roll. So we'll reroll the wind out at this stage. And it works, goes through. So we're looking at 8 minus 3. Becomes open minus four because of the stress. Add uh, cover. Do you know what, Mike? I think there is any. There's no cover as well because these have a marker drone. Uh, they have the marker light keyword, which strips cover. I believe I'll check, but I think that's the case. Yeah. Add, if the observer unit has the marker light keyword, it ignores cover, so we do strip cover away as well. So it just negates that coming through. So it's a pure minus four. So I think you're just going to continue on with this. Yeah, six up is vulnerable six. save. It's two saves here. No, now this will be trouble for sure. This is off to a good start here with the tower. This is a d6 plus one. There's two of them. So it's two d6 plus two damage. And there's seven wounds left. What the? <laughs> Your tower double six. Xenos dice adding the final spicy flavor at the end there. 14 damage. Yeah. And Mike rolls a one. All right, so it doesn't detonate. Oh, the shot's flying through that thing. Well, it's going to create a mess inside, but internal damage isn't as bad as it used to be. So Mike can, you can do it off camera. You can roll up dice here for mortal wounds coming through. It's a total of 16 at dice, I believe. But that's what hammerheads can do if it goes well. We've seen it go really well for this particular hammerhead across here. Uh, Michael Fry in command and doing so expertly for sure. I think he's taking out one of the Phoenix Lords as well. I don't know how well that will go down in the group. That's Andrew Swan. Yeah. One Space Marine player taking out another. They're both diehard Imperial players. Uh, but they're playing with Xenos toys today <laughs> for this game. Just the one. All right, not much damage at all. Perhaps the shot's whizzing through the compartment. The Orc's hardly noticing the, the solid rounds going through. But the order's been given to abandon ship here. Uh, the battle wagon... Not even, not even able to, to get off the mark here. It's been destroyed where it stands. Okay, so firepower from him finished. Whilst we think of it, we'll fire these. Seven of them can see the Megan Ops, which have now disembarked. So we'll shoot at them. As nothing special going on here. Just need fours. Sixes are lethal. It's interesting. And then fives to win, though. Just have them six. Nothing. So one save, a two plus. Okay, all right, that bounces off. Right, so next bit of firepower, and again, pairing up. I'm gonna use, these are gonna be the, the guiding unit or the spotting unit, and they're gonna go after the truck across there. And that's gonna guide this unit here, gonna unleash everything we have. So, one seeker missile, twin smart missile systems, and the high yield missile pods all to go in, in there. Uh, the strategy that we played is irrelevant now because the target we went after has been destroyed, so that all just comes away. The extra eight minus one. Uh, so, we'll We'll commit this firepower here to the next on the list. We'll go Sam Hermes. We'll draft in some of the Imperial players here. And so we'll go high yield missile pods. So you get six shots. Uh, guided in, so we need threes. But there's an exhibition of lethals. Bizarre. Three sixes. Those have hit. So these grant, I'll just point out, these grant reroll hit rolls of one. I haven't needed it this time around. Uh, they also grant reroll wound rolls of one as well, so they're useful for observing targets. So three lethal hits come straight through. Now try and wound with these. 
Strength seven, Mike. Toughness, Toughness eight. Okay, so five to eight. Uh, we are re-rolling ones, but we're twin linked actually, so. And there's one more. All right. Now, our AP is not really very good at all. Uh, it's AP minus one. Ugh. Mike's going to not get cover if we have the mark like keyword. Which we may get because we have a marker drone in the squad, which then grants me the marker like keyword. Uh, so therefore... Uh, that gives us ignoring cover, so it's a straight AP minus one coming through. That is useful. Do you know how to make a Eldar? Oh, Mike's sensing similar shenanigans now with the town. Uh, fives then? Fives then, yes, that is helpful. Just the one. And it does make a difference. There's two fours over there, which cover would have really which yep. would have helped. All right, damage two each time. Two, four, six. I am left with four. Four wins left. This target's destroyable. Let that lethal coming through is nasty. We'll see if one seeker missile can do it. Lena three. <laughs> well, I think we've made the point that lethals for Monkai as that goes goes straight through. And so no need to roll the wound. Uh, it's going to be AP minus. Ouch! Minus three. Ignoring cover. Ugh. Damage. Oh. Come on, reroll. Ooh. Um. Yeah, it's a chance to take it down. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, a chance to take it down. Oh, six. All right. The dud turns into an explosion here. Mike's kept it safe. Uh, no explosions taking place, which would cause damage for other nearby vehicles, but a second vehicle has been brought down. All right, Mike will roll up for the contents inside, which is 10 old boys. All right, I have to say, it's all going the tower's way here. Obviously, they've got their first turn, their, their first round of shooting, and getting to pick on orc targets. As before they get a chance to move, this is the, it is the perfect situation here for the tower. So they will revel in this, and they won't repent of what they're doing. They'll, they'll keep firing at range. This is, uh, an ideal situation for them. Mike's uh, rolled up some ones. There are some casualties, but models have survived. I think seven of them will disembark. As close to the wretched tower as he can physically get them. Mm -hmm. Now, the tower have to hold back like orcs. Move, advance, charge. We, we, this is at the correct distance for us. We can't push further forwards at this stage. Uh, orcs are dangerous enough. They look far away, but they can cover the ground quick enough to so the tower. Determined not to be deceived by distance here. So I'm going to shift across to these. I'm going to split fire. It's not going to guide them at all. And we're going to go for one shot all over there to the yellow truck. And then two of them, and they're all going to unleash their seeker missiles. Two of them are going to go into uh, the gun just over there on that corner. Try and take that down before it has a chance to shoot at us. So... Broadsides, a big fan of the heavy rail rifle. We'll see how well it does here. So it's two shots at a time. So all firepower from this squad, gold level Patreon, go to the artist for known as Vige. So I'm going to do two shots uh, over that truck. So needing fours now. Okay, right, so that comes through. Lethal hit. As, but again, my devastating wounds. Is cut down. Sorry, that was a three. That's actually a hit. Because we didn't move. And it's a heavy weapon. So I'm going to try and wound with this one. And no. Just going to check there's no extra, but it's just armoured. Uh, it's just a four plus against mortal wounds. So that fails to go free. Just checking we're not twin linked. No. So that's a failure. So we have one lethal hit coming through. It's AP minus four. Um, the basic armor saves of 4 plus even cover is not going to help. So we're just going to roll up on the damage, which is... One, two, four, six. I'll take it. Yeah, great. Another one. That's, I think that's three and a... I'm up the nine. Oh, you're tracking how many ones you roll? Yep. We're just... <laughs> we're seeing if, if it is just averages and everyone's just making a fuss or whether actually Mike just does roll a lot of ones. <laughs> going to keep track. <sighs> oh, dear. Damage. Two plus one. Three wounds caused. 
whilst we're at it, we're going to fire a missile. Uh, and I don't think that's heavy, the Seeker missile. No, it's just one shot. So that's actually whizzed past and missed. That truck's now escaped. Uh, so we're now switch the other two going across to the gun. Uh, we've we'll, we'll declared the missiles, so we'll fire those now. <laughs> Another lethal. I mean, how many? I should keep track of how many lethals are rolling now. Uh, so one lethal comes through. We'll try and wound on a three. God, that one's come through. Okay, so two wounds make it through in total. That's not devastating wounds. Uh, eight minus three. On the Mac gun? Yes. Did get cover, but it's a five up save, and even with plus one, it's gone straight through. Damage of five in total. Yay. It lives. Okay. But um, we'll just, yeah, we'll hold off the celebrations here. We'll go, <laughs> we'll go for the heavy our rifles first of all. Uh, there's a lethal, a hit, two misses. We'll try and wound here. Yep. It's dead, Mike. It's, uh, it's dead. This is AP minus four. Uh, the damage will be 9, 11, 11, 11 wounds. So, Does it hurt? Yeah, I don't know if it has deadly demise. No, I just checked. No. All right, off it goes. That's been destroyed. Grots removed from play. All right, one gun down. So I'm going to save the missiles. I don't want to use them. Uh, I'm going to use this squad here to guide in the shot. I'm just going to go for a solid rail gun shot uh, to try and take out that gun. So we'll turn to Nicholas Lucas, the Patreon dice have served as well so far. Are you a vehicle unit? Because I'll get plus one to the hit roll. Yeah. Yeah, it is. All right. So um, plus one to ballistic skill, plus one to the hit roll. Twos. Hits. Okay. Strength. Yeah, it's twos to end. Failed. I'll use my built-in reroll. And this is humiliating for us if we roll a one. Okay, it goes through. Uh, AP minus five, ignoring cover. D6, plus six. Ten wounds caused. And that's vaporized one of the mech guns. All right, and again, target destroyed. Oh boy, it's half shot from range. And they've done so at their leisure. They've ripped some chunks out of this orc force before it's had a chance to move. Uh, it's a policy they have to employ it. To soften up the enemy before they come in, and that's exactly what the Tal have done. So, uh, some shots from here across against the bikers. No wounds coming through, a couple of hits, but no wounds. And that's firepower from the Tal complete. End of turn, we'll calculate points for them at this stage. Okay, so end of turn, no points coming through. Uh, we've dumped both the cards, assassination and behind enemy lines, not really relevant, so we've got rid of those. We'll draw two fresh cards next turn. Uh, but tower off to the mark, off the mark here with picking off targets. Uh, I have to, Hammerhead's really making a point here for staying in the list. We we lament the loss of long strike, but now they operate differently. They I can just place them individually. They don't have to work as a pair. Uh, usually, as uh, with the index cards, long strike, that hammerhead would most likely have been over here, or he would have been over there. But because they're split up. Uh, it creates more angles on the board. So that's worked out uh, well here, just operating two hammerheads. And as you can see, without long strike, a regular hammerhead with the rail gun, guided in, ignoring cover. Uh, it's combined with lethal hits now. Uh, we've seen some real potency with those. So orcs will be sore here. A lot of the hardware uh, has been smoked here by the tower. Uh, but there's plenty of angry orcs remaining on the board. There's no doubt about that. There's an untouched Gorkonaut as well. We'll go on to the first turn of the game right here for the Orcs. So turn one for them, coming up next. All right, so turn one here for the Orcs as they swear their revenge against the Tower Guns. As you can see, Mike's surging ahead. Uh, so no prisoners and extend battle lines is the two secondaries in play. Uh, bikes here, is it built in auto six of them, is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so swung around fast, heading off in this direction. They can't reach the Tower for close combat, but they're close enough to offload uh, some Daka this turn and tactically good as well because they've got themselves onto the objective then across here and again the tower holding back shooting causing damage that's great but orcs can now well, free to surge uh, through to the middle of the board and pick up objectives so did you get your four plus cp for yeah yeah rolled yeah mike's on a healthy number of cp here so surging through uh, orc boys spearheaded by uh, the mega knobs with grog to Whopper, and they too have made it onto a no man's land objective Gorkonaut shifting down in this direction. 
boys uh, slow move from them but moving through the ruin the trucks move around and grab this objectives orcs have uh, good board uh, coverage at this stage uh, gun here copters emerging uh, ready to lay down some firepower support i think they've got themselves uh, in range of targets and then as uh, the reserves really is just the storm boys to right mics so we can't bring them down yet anyway but bear in mind inside here is the ripper and the knobs uh, getting ready to burst out and the other tip of the spear is across here now moving on foot uh, towards the center of the board so we do enter a critical stage here it's turn one turn two i think it'll be very important in this game tower have had the initial strike and cause damage for sure uh, but this orc army is still exceptionally dangerous especially for tau you just have to touch them and they fall apart in close combat. So what we've done is good, but it's not enough at, at this stage. Plus, the tower got to think about not only withstanding the orc assault, but trying to drive the orcs off of these objectives, which Mike has now claimed uh, as his force surges to the halfway line of the board. So work has been done, but there's still plenty of work that needs to be done ourselves. Mike does have firepower. So you can see some of that uh, sent back here towards the tower. Okay, so orc firepower, here it comes. Sorting here, the truck. Um. So Mike's going after the soft stuff. Uh, he's got open deck ability, he's in range 12. A lot of pistols can come up from the occupants inside as well. Yeah, so it's rapid fire two, the big shooter. So five shots, hit on fives. First salvo from the Orcs, two hits come through. Strength five. Just a one. Wound. A wee You can go to three up save for cover, which we won't take, we die. Uh, next is ten shots of the pistols. Slovers, yeah. Yeah. So, needing. It's good, range 12. Yeah, got 12. Yeah, it's good. It's a good stretch. These are strength four. Yeah. So five for hits. There's a few. Okay. Uh, three to wound, minus one because of the guardian drone. So it's going to be four's to wound. And that protects us a little bit. Two, three ups. Another one sneaks in. Okay, another casualty take. I'll go here. So a bit of revenge here from the Orcs. A couple of fire warriors being slain. Yeah, so I want to go on to... Yeah. Uh, didn't advance, by the way. Mike just made a regular move, so these occupants inside can fire as normal. All right, so Mike's going to fire with something you can't see. He's, it's over... It's right tucked in that corner. It's a sneaky grot gun. It, it's tucked right in that corner. You can see across to here, no problem. But they're sort of firing from behind the, the advancing orcs here. So it's the custom egg can. It's wildly erratic, but it can be dangerous enough for sure. It's got the potential to destroy a hammerhead. Mike wants to destroy this thing here. So he doesn't like it though, because it's D6 shots. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Dear Humphreys. Oh, okay. He's going to blame a Patreon for this one. It's too... Oh. What can you do? Balls. At least it wasn't a one. One hit comes through. Threes. Threes to wound, yeah. Okay, yep. three. Minus three, is, I think. Minus two. Minus two. Bit of cover. Three up, so. And blocked on a five. Okay, so that doesn't come through. We've escaped this time around. Sometimes that gun, you can get like six shots. Four hits and all of a sudden there's, there's trouble for a target. And what has he done? He's just not rolled a one for hazardous. Yep. Yeah, he's up to 15 ones here. <laughs> he's so far in this game. Is that ones you've rolled on single dice rolls? I'm talking... Ones across the board? Yeah. That's okay, it's not so bad. I thought it was like ones like requirement. <laughs> just like one dice, don't roll a one. Oh dear, okay. I, uh... I don't think keeping track of ones is going to help Mike get over this, but uh, we'll see. He's, he's just um, observing it. It's a science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> just have to keep going. Uh, death. 
copters. Right, their firepower. I think really their only target's gonna be him. Yeah, it blows up the blast keyboard, but not gonna help this time around. Okay. I could possibly hit the firewall. Warriors, but that's no, small. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll pay it. I'm gonna pay it. It's two CP. It's very expensive. Ready for what it is, uh, but if you want to keep something alive, counter fire defense systems. Make sure I got this right. Your opponent's shooting phase just after the new unit selects its targets. One time per unit from your arm that selects as a target one or more of the unit's attacks. You get it into the end of the phase though, so each time attack is allocated to the unit minus one to the damage roll. Uh, so I'm going to do it now. I'm going to try and keep him alive. He's taken no damage. It'll turn those rockets into damage two instead of damage three. And Mike's going to use. Chris Comiskey. The Chris Comiskey dice. Because on a, a bunch of dice, you get some wild results. Which it looks all right. It does, yeah. So just 1d3 shots each. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yep. Okay. Mike's rolled really well, though. Now he's got himself eight shots. Mm. Hitting on fives. Yeah, five is the issue there. And it's all right, three. Strength nine. Okay. Uh, three's to win. There's twin linked. Helpful, all three. Yeah, this is minus two, flat three. Okay. I think I'm in the open now from where you are uh, without your unit in the way, that's fine. So, minus two. Minus two. Four ups. Yeah. Now, I've blocked one. That would have been six damage becomes four damage. There's nothing else I can do to stop this, so I'm going to have to take that damage coming through. Four wounds taken. So I'm half slain. So I've got five wounds left because I do have a shield drain in there to push me up to nine wounds. Let's drop it down to five. So that's the death, cop death copter's done. Gorkonaut's got rockets of its own as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mike can split with this or offload or see what he decides to do. Okay, so uh, everything. Yeah. Everything's going into him. I'm trying to overwhelm the target with lots of DACA coming through, plus the rockets. 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, this is the Death Storm, I think it is. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Fives. Uh, so yeah, this is where it goes. Oh. You can reroll that one as a drop dice technically. You can roll that one again. Okay. Yeah, another one. So we're looking at seven hits coming through. Yeah, out of thirty. It's not awful. Bit below average, yes. Strength six. Toughness six. Fours. Four swings. And above average, like some recovery. Five wounds come through. Uh, minus one in the open. One, yeah. uh, three ups. Ugh, that's how far I blocked them all. Armour holds on the broadside. Rocket launcher D3. Just the one. Need the five. Yeah, I... Twin big shooter. Well, I think you get a lot more than that. I think. Uh, yeah, we'll check this one. Yeah, we're just doing the rocket launcher, just tracking back because it's been extra three shots, which yeah. Mike has rolled up here. In fives. Just a one. Three's to win. Comes through. Six is the main thing. Block that one, that goes, doesn't go free. And then the, the second twin big shooter. Yeah, it's two twin big shooters. Nope. I missed, all right. Yeah. Orc Firepower's always said you just can't, mm. it's there. Take it as a bonus, but it's, it's very hard to rely on Orc Firepower. It's just difficult to get that from them. Close combat is a breeze for them, but shooting, uh, just take it as a bonus. I suppose you can't go down that philosophy of the Tau do their shooting, the Orcs think, oh, now it's my turn to shoot because it's just, it's not comparable. Uh, it's a bit like the Tau saying, oh, Oh, you've done your combats. Now I get to do, I get to do mine. It's almost like a total waste of time uh, for the tower when they do uh, their close combats. They 
do next to nothing. Unless it's far sight. Well, maybe we'll see him in close combat. He's uh, off the ball at the moment. Uh, but he does relish the fight. He's one of the town models that can uh, fight quite effectively in close combat. So do bear in mind, this is King Slayer. Ooh. Tower of Lost Stairs already. Uh, but for the Orcs, in the belly of that beast is the Ripper, if the Tower can get to him uh, to slay the king. Yep, so the uh, War Trek. Yes. The Death Killer Bombstick. Six. Hit on fives. Oh, missed. Okay. Kill it, yeah, Brunner. D6 for two. Uh, it's auto hits, so strength five. Three swing. One comes three. Minus, Minus one. one yeah. Five ups. No, burnt out. <clears throat> and barbecued fish. Oh, minus one to wound roll, but still come through just for the um, Guardian Dream. One, two, three, four, five, six spikes. Six spikes, yeah, yeah. they're all in. So the twin tackers on. Yeah, another two dice just to add into that pile. This is one of the models in rapid fire. Fives. Okay, three stewing becomes fours for the Guardian Drone. Four. Four come free. No way, P. Uh, two slain uh, from that squad. Yeah, there's covered there. So just the one slain. So one model removed uh, from play. I think that's firepower finished here for the Orcs. Charges none at this stage. Uh, bikes advanced these units will push forwards no targets arranged orcs have gained ground they have moved to the middle of the board as disheartening for them because the resource for them this turn has been firepower and it's not going to match what the tower uh, have at their disposal so we'll see what points have come through uh strategically mike stein okay you push forward to the middle of the there's board. one charge one charge with the truck yep might as well well Tarantis. if you want to go ahead all right, yeah, he's got boys on the objective, so he's going to go for it with this one. Nope. No, all right, no. The driver's happy to sit where he is. All right, so no charges. We'll update you on the score. All right, so Mike, come on, re-rolled that and failed. Just wanted that charge to go ahead, but it's uh, not happened. So end of turn. No prisoners has been kept, not traded in. Extend battle lines has been cashed in, though, for five victory points. So Orc's actually off the mark here. Five points to zero at this stage. Very early at part of the battle here is turn one. That finishes up. Turn two will be crucial for the Orcs trying to engage. Also for the Tower of their reserves to try and blunt the Orcs, disrupt the Orcs uh, if they can. It's gone well for the Tower so far. We'll see if we, they can keep the momentum uh, going. And the game, I think, in their favour just for damage. But the middle ground has been taken by the Orcs. We'll see if the Tower can prize it from them uh, as we head into turn two for them coming up next. All right, so turn two for the Tower. Uh, no prisoners and extend bass lines is the two cards in play. So it's almost like the orders have come through for the tower to go after those uh, no man's and objectives to take them back. Uh, two points picked up for primaries though for the control of our home objective. And another four plus was rolled to generate ourselves an extra CP. And then uh, no prisoners kill stuff as well. So this is uh, the next phase here for the tower. The, we've got a plan. There's some tricky stuff going on. As uh, sort of left this side here is not too much. I wanted to do about the bikers. I've put the warriors up here, and I'm just going to try and put some shots across. Our heads backed up, not away from those so much, but to get a better angle and to be able to see the Gorknot to lend some firepower support in this direction. Again, the angle of fire that we have of these is pretty good, so we've kept at the broadsides where they are. They can support across in this direction. Fire warriors have got themselves a bit higher just to plunge some firepower into. Uh, the orcs there in the ruin. The hammerhead moves across and squared himself up just so he can fire through to the Gorkonaut and no cover in between. Uh, these have sat where they are or moved to their left about half an inch. They're well positioned to assist with guiding units in. Held position with him. Uh, shuffle a little bit of the warriors. Again, lay down some firepower down into the orcs moving through. In the distance, you can see uh, some deep striking units 
where all my Leap Strike units have arrived. Uh, Farsight, though, has turned up here, in the heart of the tower, forced to lend uh, some support to bolster the line, uh, to lend some firepower uh, assistance, and also to brace for close combat with the Orcs as they try and burst through. So it's a thematic game, this one, but it's it's been brutal so far. Frustrating for the Orcs as well, as they, they itch to get to grips with the tower. Uh, and then just using Mike's green dice uh, to follow the line of keeping nine inches away. I'm not sure about the configurations here, both geared up for heavy anti-tank. Uh, the Sunforge configuration here with the double uh, fusion blasters. Uh, the Lone Squad across here to take out the truck, I think it's the plan. I think I've got enough to take down, we'll see, we've got enough to take on the Gorkonaut. And so as uh, Ghost Tide's turned up here to offload some firepower in this direction. These are all vehicle targets uh, for him to bring down, so just staying just over nine inches away. Turning up here, and there'll be the drones uh, with them as well. In response, Rapid Ingress, Mike's brought in a small reinforcement squad here. You know, Storm Boys uh, landing on the objective. Uh, twofold reason, just to get yourself more stuff onto that objective. Mm -hmm. And then also, potentially, if he wants to, to counterattack as well. That's movement done. The tower have ambushed the Orcs. Uh, reinforcements arriving behind enemy lines. We'll go into shooting phase next. Uh, another, the tower hoping for another good exhibition of firepower. That could really... It will certainly help them, uh, for sure, to try and seriously weaken this Orc force uh, and then start the process of clearing them off objectives. Uh, Mike's declared a wag, by the way. That was the start of the command phase. Orcs are on the juicy line along here. <laughs> this, is where the, this is where the points are. Town know that. Uh, and so we've got to be brutal with our firepower. So we'll, we'll pick our first unit here. We'll see how we do. So, uh, spoiler alert, look away now if you haven't followed our... Kingslayer games so far. There's plenty of entrants so far as uh, on the channel. So Captain Parmenian remains alive for the Imperial Fists. Typhon for the Hive Tyrants was slain. Captain Lazarus the Blood Angels was slain. Belisarius was squashed by the Orcs. Gut Ripper uh, remains alive. Ghost Tide was brought down. The Avatar for the Eldar was slain, tragically. Uh, I just had to blob that out because he's not been slain yet. The Demon Prince for the Thousand Sons, the weird monster that he is, is still alive. Captain Dark Trophies for the Red Scorpions remains alive as well. So there's a good tally here of models slain and alive. And then for the League, it's kicked off very early here. The first game has been played Blood Angels against Tyranids. Blood Angels with that notable win. We plan to do some more League battles uh, very soon. So that's the League. We would really love to work our way through all of the factions, get them all represented, to catch all the battles. They'll be here on YouTube and over on YouTube channel membership. So if you want to catch the full League this year, do join us on membership. Link for that in the video description below. And it really is the channel members that help uh, keep the channel running. So everyone that's signed up and for those of you that do sign up, massive thank you to you. So we're going to fire this hammerhead. Both of its smart or sicker missiles have not been used yet. So it's going to offload those. Uh, I was going to say smart missile systems over there, but I can't. I can't split up here, so we're going to guide him in. Uh, so we're going to go across uh, against the hammerhead, then everything that we have, and it's going to be guided in by this fire warrior squad here. Okay. So we'll pick a Patreon. They have served us well so far. We'll go Blood Angels, Ryan, and we'll go for... The Rao gun first. Needing a two. Because fours, ballistic skills pushed up by one. Uh, and then we're up against a vehicle monster. And there it is. Dug in. Lethal. Okay. Uh, so that's that done. Da. The wag. Okay. Mike despairs of the dice for it. Okay. Um, there's not much I can do. I just sort of throw them... Yeah. Uh, and then now Mike's gonna try and block with five plus. What's the one? Oh. A six. He's done it. Oh boy, what would the damage have been? God, it would have been eleven. Oh, that's the problem. That's when those kick in. That's the problem. Eleven wounds blocked. Right. Two rockets. Oh man, that's a that's a stoppage. Two hits. Strength fourteen. I think I'm good enough to wound on threes. Quite possibly. Uh, toughness 12. Toughness 12. It is tough enough, but 14 is brilliant. And two wounds do come through. Minus. Right. Minus three. You've been marker lighted up. So it's just, it's just, just a stripping colour, yeah. That's cover, so down to five ups. 
Big rolls, these two. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I can play on one of these ones. Oh, he's going to go for a Patronic Friend. Chris Heim, Imperial Player. And both dice. Fives. <gasps> Six and threes blocked one. <sighs> and the one you blocked? Oh, would have been two damage. And the one that made it through? Seven. Wounds caused. Totem. Not the wrong way around. Yeah. Um, Seven. Thirteen left. Oof, Thirteen wounds <clears throat> remain. Can't afford to have another railgun shot blocked. It's as simple as that. Thirteen wounds remain. Nice simple dice carrying platform on top. Okay. That's where Gut Ripper gives his speeches from on top there. That's his platform. Okay. So, yeah, we'll have to stop there. Hammerhead's done his job, but it's been blocked there by the Invan Save 5 Plus. Okay, we'll go, we'll turn to this Hammerhead here. One, uh, we've used our rockets, so single shot straight into the beast uh, here. Jordan Russell. As lit up by these, guided in by them. So three ups, and then against that target, it's going to be twos. And there's the one. We'll use the built-in reroll. <laughs> missed. Missed. It was coming. And we missed. <laughs> Just at the wrong time. <sighs> okay, we burnt through our lethals here, and a double one just at the wrong point. Okay, so that's firepower from him finished. Uh, bit, of, bit of shooting from these, actually, the little... Rockets, we'll go with those. There's two, <laughs> two lethals. A hit, uh, no wound, twin links, and it's not going to be enough. Two saves, no minuses. I think you're two ups. Three ups. Three ups, okay. Mm -hmm. Chance to pick up a wound or two. No, blocked. All right, well done. Actually equipped with two smart missile systems, so we'll, we'll go again. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> oh, no. no problem. We'll leave it at that. So I did have these lined up to take on Grog de Whopper, but I I got to take on the Gorkonaut. So I'm going to fire these at the Gorkonaut to be guided in by this unit here. So I could still do it, could still do it, but I need good results. So sat still, heavy weapons guided. It's actually twos, and we'll go. To Michael German for this one. Burning through the Patrons here, most of them being used for firepower here in this game. Looking for twos. Right, one miss, one lethal. So you're saying your strength or your toughness 12. Mm -hmm. The heavy rail gun is strength 12, so it's going to be fours for wound set. Boy, oh boy, sixes would be great. Can't really complain. Reroll, just hold it right there because of these. I'm going to reroll that hit roll. Remember, I rolled a one. Mm -hmm. Lethal. And then the wound roll, I rolled a one. I'm going to reroll that again because of those. And that's helped. God, boys, that made a huge difference. So we've now got two lethals. Four have made it through. Uh, it doesn't really matter. We've got no devastating wounds coming through here. So it's going to be six wounds in total. If we've got this right. Uh, these will come through at stripping cover. Because they have the marker like keyword. And the total AP is AP minus four. So Mike will definitely go down to the five plus invulnerable save. It's on six dice. This is deadly enough. It's going to the Nate Miller dice. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> that's the key. No. Sorry, Nate. That's the key. That's One of the tower. main tower players here. Carl Roden for Chitin. Yeah. Tyranny player. Fives needed. <laughs> it's average, so you can't... It's like... Gosh, two have been picked up. Four have made it through. What's the damage Each there? one is D6 plus one. So, so it is deadly. So if you do command reroll and you block one, it'll be 3D6 plus three damage. Averaging probably about four. So on an average and above no, roll, it, it will be destroyed. 
He's thinking now, if he gets out, disembarks, advance and charge, you'll be in. Leave it. Cool. So I'll take away two. Yeah. Dead. Target destroyed. That's 14, 18 what? damage A coming through. You hear me? Six. For what? For detonation? Yeah. Oh no, six for... Um... Detonation. Oh, for Kareem. For Kareem, because he can make a normal move, which will get me another eight inches that way. Oh, wow. Oh, weird. All right. No! no! This is trademark one. <laughs> okay. And I didn't say a word. I just stood there in silence. Oh, so you can do what James does, which is practice his dice rolling. Which I think is one of the one of the most waste of time exercises in the world because how could you practice rolling dice? <laughs> I can get it if you're doing football skills or or rugby or you're practicing your golf, but no, how could you practice dice? Or I don't know how it can. But James James swears by it apparently. <laughs> but uh, James, if you're watching, you can confirm or deny it if uh, you do practice dice rolling. So Mike's placed models out here uh, at the front. You may as well go bold with them. Uh, the five plus invulnerable save uh, will help him out even if he's in the open. And then I said the Gorkonaut can be removed from play. But Tau Tau have gone after armor targets uh, here. It's proved most effective in this game. Uh, their firepower crisscrossing uh, across this board here and taking their targets down. So it's all recon this game. These are useful, and they're quite cheap. They're 75 points. Uh, so I'm just keeping them lurking at the back here, but granting the real ones to hit, real to wound, real ones to wound, uh, is proven very useful indeed. With the marker-like keyword as well, so they're a very, very useful observer unit that can just uh, work for you along uh, the back lines here. And then these have, have proved to be useful here. If you can get them into a good position, haven't had to move them, and they've been able to fire across in different directions, so not too bad. And Hammerhead's uh, proving their worth, for sure, uh, in this game. So uh, one of the guided, or the uh, spotting units from earlier on, the uh, Warriors across here, gonna fire into the boys just through there, not the Mega Nobs. Uh, three of them in rapid. No kind of help coming through, you just need fours. One lethal. Dreadful. Firepower. Obviously distracted by bigger things. Uh, those do win, though. Uh, it's Mike's in cover, so is your base save 5 plus? In which case you can go up to 4. The boys, yeah. Yeah, so you can go to 4s then. Oh. Uh, block 2, and 2 slain, yeah, 2 brought down. I'm uh, going to fire these into the knobs in the road. Uh, it's a reduced, they're all in rapid, but I lost 2, so it's 16 shots. No kind of help, 6 is a, oh, there's some. Seeing the usefulness of lethal. Tower with lethal is lethal. Look with sixes. Yeah, plus Xenos dice. I'm uh, going to try and wound hit on fours. Okay. So I think Mike's just going to take the... Your base armor save still five plus, not four plus. It used to be on knobs. Four? Four, take it. Yeah, four ups then on seven dice. Six, seven, yeah, fours. I think dropped a dice over there. Two, four, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I think they're two wounds each. It's going to be three slain. It's a good volley. Not high enough for plunging fire. But, uh, not going to make too much difference. We need to be up here to get it. But three models. That'll help. So this now will offload everything it has into the knobs with the ripper. Now stripping away the bodyguard here. So we're going to go with... Yeah, sorry. Mike's got a stratagem he could use. and thinking about using it. Hard as nails. Minus one to the wound roll. It would be useful. Uh, I'll be coming in at strength seven with the high old missile pod. That'd be six shots. Uh, the smart missile systems will be strength five. So knock it down a bit. But and there's two damage. Six shots. Needing fours. No, just for Leave it, okay. Too late, too late now. So uh, I want him to guide these onto the Mega Knobs, but I'm going to resolve his firepower into there uh, first of all. So we'll go for these. High up the 
We'll go Travis and Jen on this one. Yeah, no, they're a pair, so we'll go to Fair Holland Field Marshal Robert for this one. So high up Mr. Pops. Okay, for fours is good. Or maybe not. We sat still, you know. Get no help from anyone. Just using a normal ballistic skill. Hi, old missile pod. It's just twin link. Don't get heavy. So just looking for fours. Most of those missed. One lethal. Very used to win. Twin linked. All right. Two make it through. Uh, down to the one save five plus. No damage to each time. Just two make it through. It's a big squad, though. It's a squad of 10, so they're, they're still protecting uh, the Ripper. And then we'll go for the Smart Missile Systems <coughs> here. So, oh, it's a twin Smart Missile System. Yeah, it's a four shots. In fours. Uh, Two wounds come through. Twin linked. Two wounds. And no AP minus. You blocked one. Oh. Yeah, it's just one wound taken. One wound. Just checking. Yeah. And I've used up the main missile, so that's five power from him. Finished. So uh, we're going to fire Far Sight's unit with his squad. They're going to go into uh, Grog the Whopper's squad here. So you can get Pure Tide's teachings. You can use Stratagem for zero CP. It's got to be a battle uh, tactic strategy. We've got four options. One's for uh, transport vehicles and infantry. One I've missed it because it's done at the start of the shooting phase. This one's the movement phase, moving quicker. And then this one's done in any phase like a revenge type thing. So there's not really many options available. Uh, command reroll though is useful. I suppose I could use that for zero CP. The command mm -hmm. reroll. It's a battle tactic. Okay, so we will offload the Crisis Fire Knife Battle Suit configuration. We've gone for double plasma. Mike's using Arda's nails. Yep. For minus one to the wind roll. Minus one to the wind roll. Yeah. Uh, helpful enough. Uh, and then our ability is: Are you a fresh squad? Haven't taken any wounds or casualties. No. No, which means we'll re-roll hit rolls for fire knife. If that attack is targets a unit that is at its starting strength, you can re-roll the hit roll instead. So we're going to re-roll hit rolls. Mike's going to minus one to our wound roll. I think that ability I correct us if I'm wrong. I think Mike knows the answer to this bit of trivia here. I think it's the case that the unit's ability will also rebuff the character. He'll get it. Yeah. Okay, that's what we think. Okay, so I'll do him first of all. Debut roll using the a debut model with a longbow BB in command of the model. I'm going to use the longbow BB dice. Here it comes, the moment of truth. I'm going to fire the high intensity plasma rifle for the first time ever, ever into the face of Grog the Whopper. Hold it right there. We'll fire the bodyguard first, just in case we can strip away. And then I can put plasma into the face of Grog. That makes sense. <laughs> so we'll go we'll go with his friends first of all. So plasmas each. Cross the up. We are looking for targets been lit up. Threes to hit, re-rollable. There's two lethals. Off to a pretty good start. We'll roll these ones. Okay, we're now trying wound. So we are coming in at strength eight. Three to win becomes fours. fours yeah. Ah, that's useful. Ah, it's useful. Stopped that one. So three have made it through. Could have done better, but three have made it through so far. I wish we could take a bigger squad, but we're up to our max here at squads of three. Uh, so we are looking at AP minus three. <clears throat> you can take cover from that because you weren't. Did you let me up? I lit you up, but it wasn't with a marker like unit, crucially. So I've got a four up now. Yeah, so a minus two effectively, off two up armor save is four ups. Yeah. So yeah, that's giving you a bit of a, a uh, boost there. So yeah. three saves of four plus. Mike turns to Vagabond. Right. And you use a tower player, but also an orc player. And a Salamander's player. And right, definitely on Mike's side. <gasps> and blocks two. So what's the damage? Damage three. Do you know what I have? 
something. What? Dead hard. No, it, it. When you call a Y until the start of the next battle round, this model, yeah. that's the model. Not the unit. No! <laughs> so you have to lose one of the models here, Mike, for perhaps I feel no pain across the board. I don't want pain no more. So we're looking at removing one model. Some of them are named. So he's picked one. Oh, I do also have a name down there. Okay. And you're going to have to stay. Hang on. He's going to pick out the nameless model. Yeah. That's fine. Pick out the nameless model. Okay. So we'll now turn to Commander Farsight with his two shots. So we're not going to get through to Grog the Whopper. That's the precision, which they're not. So we're looking at twos for him. The wrong name. Oh, sad. Oh, sorry, Casper. Casper Kemp. Okay. There could be more to follow. Two hits come through. Three to him becomes fours. It's good use of a stratagem, but we do get the two wounds to come through. Fours to block, though. On two dice. Oh, one more makes it through. All right. Bodyguard's being dropped, but not enough to stop that unit. Bodyguard stuff going on, characters protecting, characters being protected. Amy. Amy Almo, okay. Yeah, there was an unnamed model in there, so the unnamed model's been removed, and Casper Kemp still remains off, okay, and the others, uh, the other Altarks remain protecting the Whopper, who is now dangerously close. So, observation about the battle suits, which I suspected. And that is that they're at firepower. It's okay, but it's yeah, there's not much to it really. There's a low amount of firepower coming through, so you know, impact they land looks impressive, but yeah, some damage coming through. We'll switch to the other side of the board, and there's a swarm of battle suits arrived across the other side of the table. So, Tau doing okay, but is edgy. Scary stuff here for the tower because it's the orc infantry which can be dangerous. Blown away the transports, fine, but we've got to kill the the choppy stuff. And it's still there's t the horns of the buffalo are still going. There's the two war bosses uh, dangerously close across there. But anyway, we'll we've, we'll have to leave that. We'll focus on firepower from these. See what kind of targets we can bring down. So what we're going to do is uh, these are going to observe, spot the copters for these. Nice and straightforward. Uh, and I think their firepower is going to go into the truck. So we're just going to focus on eliminating armoured targets if we can. Uh, I don't want to split here. We'll leave that gun and we'll just go after the copters and try and bring them down. Uh, so, fusion blasters. Three lots of two. So we'll do those. So target's been lit up. We're looking at threes. Uh, yeah, good. A lethal. And the rest have hit. This is really good if we can just get those hits. Because with some forge, uh, you if you go for a monster or vehicle, which is our target, uh, we can re-roll the wound roll and the damage roll. So we're now looking at three to wound. Pfft, they were wounded anyway. Okay, so six out of six. Oh boy, I can't complain. So those make it three. Michael take the five plus in one save though for the warg. But this is very, very dangerous indeed. And uh, five go through. No, four go through. Four make it through. I can roll these one at a time. Damage six. It's going to be a target brought down. Two, which will reroll. Six. One, which will reroll. And it stays a one. And then the last one, six. That's it. Target's destroyed. They've all been brought down. Uh, and the commander didn't get to use his shooting, really just focused on trying to take a target down, but uh, copter's gone. So well done to them. Next squad, straight up six shots. This is without any kind of help. This is going to be different. This is going to be fours. And that's the huge difference, because I can't do nothing about those that have missed. Those uh, sixes are both lethal, so they'll go straight through. Just down to invulnerable saves now, two dice. I could need to pass one, which he does. And I don't think I can destroy that thing. It's on eight wounds left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so damage of three. I'll re-roll it. 
and get a one. All right, so one wound cause. What a contrast, what a difference. So what I'm thinking is, uh, just, just watching these, and I sort of uh, was chewing over this uh, before the game, uh, Christ's Battlesuit teams, they need to be guided, and they're better when they've got some, some kind of commander yeah. uh, with them. If I had a commander with those to back them up, say with Quad Fusion, uh, they don't have some kind of backup firepower going in, but it's a co huge contrast to what we've seen uh, here with the results coming through. So that's actually the end of the turn. Fired down here and caused two wounds, not enough to destroy a model. Kind of abandoned this flank uh, here, so this biker squad's hardly been touched. Uh, firepower from the tower, they've took out the machinery of the orcs here. They've picked on one target after the next, bring them down. Uh, but Mike still has fighting units for sure. It's a double war boss. One in the ruin, uh, one on the road. Bodyguard uh, protecting both. Uh, Mike will seek to engage in close combat. I think he's going to steamroller in this direction. I think he might turn about with one of the units. We'll see what he decides to do. Orcs uh, have taken a blistering amount of damage uh, here from the tower. But combat is where uh, the tables can be turned. Charges for the tower is none. I don't want to charge any against anybody. So we'll leave the turn where it is. We'll calculate points, give you an update on the score here at the end of turn two. Okay, so points coming through. Five points uh, picked up for no prisoners, uh, quite comfortably for the tower. Uh, then we've kept extend battle lines for the hope that we can regain one of these no man's land objectives, and that's it. So we're on seven points to five. Uh, we're going to go on to Mike's turn next. Now this is where the avalanche of points comes through. Mike's got three no man's land objectives. Still controls his home objective, so he's going to bypass the town points quite comfortably. Uh, and then he's got the two secondaries in play as well. So orc, tactically, orcs are in the right place. Tau have caused a horrific amount of damage, though, so perhaps the tower can just keep stripping away uh, here at the orcs. But the way that Mike can disrupt that is to now engage in close combat across the board, start cutting down tower units and cutting down their firepower options. We'll see. Uh, which direction Mike decides to turn. Whichever way he charges, the tower will find themselves in trouble. Turn two for the Orcs coming up next. Phase here for the orcs. There's a fair bit to cover. I'm just about to do Overwatch. We knew they were coming. Boom free. Mike's rod a one uh, for his advance. So it's going to be a six inch move, but it closes the gap really well. So they're, they're going to make it in. Uh, so, uh, spending CP. Six is from Far Sight himself. Missed. Um. Just holding, just checking the wording of this. Each time I make a ranged attack, a real hit rolls of one. Uh, you're below your starting strength though, so I don't get the real hit rolls. So I think I can reroll this one. Do correct us wrong. Uh, do correct us in the comment section if, if you think we're wrong. Uh, both of those have missed. Uh, and then I'll go to the plasma rifles from the squad. There's two on each model. Six is rerolling ones. Could really do with some. And just the one comes through. Three's to wound. It does wound. So Mike can take a uh, inbun save of four. Five plus. Blocked on a six now, the Orcs. <laughs> All right, they're in the open here. Overwatch has been used up. Uh, it hasn't been effective. Uh, and Mike's now poised for the charge. I think Ripper's going to join in. Well, I want to do the advance, so I get the plus two because I paid CP for it. Here we go. Here we go. So nice, six. six in total. Plus two, 
Plus his regular move of five or six. Uh, War boss six, so twelve. Twelve inch move. He's sneaking down there. Okay, so the horns. Yeah, so of the buffalo are heading down in this direction so not going for the wide sweep here with uh, these two pronged attacks but working closely together this time around two war bosses going in with their bodyguard all right we're saying we're talking about the game in general uh the orcs got their chance for charges they've got to do really really well to try and cut this tower force down if they don't the tower just may well have done enough uh, destruction already just to uh, give a killing blow to the orcs we'll see disembarking from here moving across a really good advance roll moving across to go after, after those supported by uh, the storm boys jumping through leaving the gun on the objective uh you got a boy squad here yeah they moved up already okay looks like movement phase is actually finished bikers have screamed around here guaranteed six inch advance so we left that flank open and the orcs have swung right round. And then Mike has brought in the other Storm Boy squad to anchor the objective. We reckon, correct us if we're wrong, five, five, five victory points, 15 in total, plus home objective 17 for primaries. We reckon Mike can pick that up. Obviously, there's a tally, there's a there's a total that can be picked up at, at the end of the game. Uh, like a cap to it, you can't pick up more than 50 points, but we can't see any restriction that says Mike can't pick up 17 points. Uh, in one turn so massive amount of points coming through here uh, so yes orcs damage wise have suffered horrifically at the hands of the tower uh, but they're keeping the points flowing in it's points is where the game is won shooting phase next then charges all right so shooting phase we've, we've rushed through uh some of the shooting here most of the shooting for the orcs firepower from these bit of a drive-by uh, shooting here plus uh, some pistol shots coming through just two fire warriors left in that squad uh, where else was their damage done? Nowhere else, really. No. no, no. Nothing. Okay, so we've got one shot left. It's the mech gun. D6 shots going into here to try and take out him. It could be done. Uh, we'll see. Uh, D3? Yeah. No D6? And this is a uh, Maxwell Knuckles dice being used. Yeah. D6. D6, yeah. Four, okay, not so bad, not so bad. Come on, Grox. Four. Fours yeah. for hits. You'll get an MVP if you do it. Come on. Yeah, fours. Two. Don't worry, Harry, I'll get him. <laughs> Three. Threes. Big roll. Um, I'll roll dice, see what I get. Or oh, unless you want to come on re-roll, sorry. Yeah, let's think, think, think. Five. five wounds left. Your d6 plus one damage. Just d6. Straight d6. <sighs> I don't like that. Got it though. Got it though, two. Right. Rolled high, rolled well. We'll calculate this one. Yeah, it's so a base of two up. I've blocked both. I rolled high enough. Ones and twos would have been trouble. Ugh. They did their best, but they, they did fire a tough target in the end. Shooting phase is finished. Charges, there's a good number of them. I can see about three, four, One, two, five, three. six, seven potential charges. That sounds healthy for the Orcs. Overwatch has been used up as well, by the way. Uh, the tower fired here on Overwatch, coming through, and no damage caused against the bodyguard and Grog the Whopper. So... Time for the tower is over. The time for the orcs <clears throat> is here. We're going to charges for them next. Well, I'm sure plenty of people, well, hopefully not, but I'm sure there's people who've tuned out and said, as soon as I saw tower turn one, <laughs> I knew it was all over. And now look what we've got. The green tide has come in. This has happened before. Uh, orcs visually uh, losing their transport vehicles. It's been horrific. Uh, Gorkonaut brought down, Defcopters, Towders blasting uh, their armoured targets to pieces, but the infantry have made it in. All of Mike's charges have gone ahead, as, and the Tau now find themselves in trouble. Across the other side, uh, Orc Boys, we'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see, Orc Boys have slammed in against the Crisis Battlesuit team. Ghost Tide's team has been hit by Orc Boys. Also the Storm Boys made it in against them. Uh, then across here, Gut Rippers charged in. 
both against this squad and also uh, the broadside team uh, with his knob squad. Uh, then Grog Duwapa has gone in against Commander Farsight and his team. There's three Mega Knobs in that squad as well, so they're going to be dangerous enough on the charge. The bike is swarming around uh, the Hammerhead on this side, and they'll be able to tap into the broadsides as well. Most Tau units now find themselves in close combat. I think the Storm Boys make it in a chance to bring down the last couple of Fire Warriors over on this flank. Now, if the Orcs can do this, if they can cause trouble and pin the Tau back and keep us away from these central objectives, the Orcs will win the game. And so it just shows that the Tau, if we're a form of force, we're not just, we don't just have to be brutal with our firepower, we've got to be utterly brutal to wipe out stuff quickly and then gotta get onto objectives because we have caused heavy damage, no doubt about that. Uh, but what we found to do is get out onto these central objectives uh, and Mike's now trying to keep the Tau at bay. Uh, and if you can keep the points flowing in, starve out the Tau, the Orcs, despite the damage, will win the day. All right, uh, a bit nervous now. Mike's picked out the Raycross dice. He's lining up his uh, attacks here. I was about to use counterfire defense systems in close combat, but you can't shooting only has to uh, reduce damage by one. Mike's going to go this fight here. It's the most potent close combat option the Tau have. <coughs> After that, uh, there is no point in interrupting play. Just have to just let the Orcs do their thing. Uh, so... Can he get to fast sight is the question. If you don't get to me, I'll swing back with a sword. <laughs> a butter knife. Um, the bodyguard first. They're all equipped to power claws. On bridle carnix has been used. So okay. fives explode and sell sixes. With the index cards, I used to run shield generators. We don't have them on the bodyguard yet. Um, I'm hitting on twos because the poor boss. Yeah. So five pop, explodes, right? That one explodes. And two more because of the card. Mm, and that one. Because okay. of the uh, stratagem. This is a good strike. So strength nine. Strength nine. Okay. Two's to wind. I three's to wind. Toughness five. Okay. So what are we? Strength nine, you sure? Strength nine, yeah. Power flow? Yeah. Yeah. And the wild gives you extra strength? Yes. Included? Not included. Just Add one to the strength. <sighs> yeah. Let's just... An attack's characteristic. Oh, and an extra attack. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know this, people. Sorry. <laughs> and that pops an extra as well. Oh, man. So, two's the one. Go ahead, we've extra hits coming through. Six is a devastating as well. Yeah. I only got the one. Just the one, okay. Now that's two, four, six, we're dead, eight, we're dead, we're dead. Ten, twelve, minus two. I know what he's doing, he's trying to get Grog to whop us up to hack down far sight. Yes. Don't do it, Mike. What's JP minus? Minus two, plus two. Minus two. Five ups. On this many dice. <laughs> oh, I didn't count one thing. And that's the blessed Xenos dice. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, it still not, might, might not be enough. So we're looking at... It is going to be really helpful, actually, I have to say. So damage of... Two. Two. Yeah, plus the devastating. Uh, the devastating. One, yeah. So you've got two wounds so far. Six wounds is going to slay one. And six wounds is going to slay another. Mm -hmm. All right, it's two slain. Uh, four wound models, and then the shield drones on each, so he pushes up to six wounds each. So two of them removed from play, but the bodyguard, oh, just about, thanks to that roll. Uh, otherwise, you'd be virtually looking at a wipeout. So I'll just do the uh, the roll of honor here for some of our autarchs. Sam Hermes hacked down, and then Ben Harris hacked down as well. It's uh, doing a noble job. So bodyguards attacked. Mike's now trying to fight with Grog the Whopper himself. Yeah. I think he has built-in devastating wounds. I don't think he's going to get to far side though. Uh, no, he doesn't. But he does because of the kill chopper, the the upgrade that you give him. Oh. So he's he's only four attacks. 
Hmm. Uh, Dwarg. Plus one for the war, yeah. It's five. Five attacks. Hmm. Okay. Need two. Uh, misses, but then pops. Yeah. Six. Twos. Twos to win. I think these are damage two as well. Well, oh, they all go through. So that one's devastated, and then four. At minus. Minus two. Nice. Fives. Now, kind of rolled that wrong because it's an invulnerable save on. We know that supplied last. Mm hmm. Uh, okay, and that's going to cut me down like so. So I need to randomize to see if that four would have been rolled for far sight. Mm -hmm. um, so I just need to roll dice. Uh, a one, two, three, four. I think this is the way we're going to do it. Five, let's roll again. A three, which would be one, two, three. So it's that one there, which means no, which means uh, wipe out two wounds plus those two onto far sight. <sighs> He's been hit and wounded. How many wounds is an eight wound model plus a shield drone? So is a nine wound model. Uh, sorry, checking the profile. He doesn't get any drones. I gave him drones at the start of the game, but he does. There's nothing. There's no. There's no choice for taking drones uh, with fast sight. So that means he's down to four wounds left. That's the situation. Set upon by orcs. Typical. They're all equipped to power claws. This is the thing. Once they're in, it's orc lists. Once they get in, there's so much trouble. Mike's got two models that can fight. He's done a, a, a piling move with this squad. So two can fight against far sight. The rest are going to go against, against the broad side here. This is the, the rot has started. I'm just going to take away this poster so we can see a bit better what's taking place. But there's Farsight fighting away. I hope he's going to survive, but there's two Orc knobs that have sneaked in with Power Claws to go after him. So what's that? Like eight attacks? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Please. I just, I'm going to have to go. The Travis and Gent? Yeah. So Travis will go. Where are Gent? will go there. Great. So Travis attacks to take down Farsight. Unbelievable. Model debuting. It's been lent to me as well. It's not mine. Go easy. No, it's not. Nope. Mike, Mike likes this. Look what's happening. He, the ones that he rolls, he recycles them in to add to the pile. That's the way to use your ones, Mike. Go. <laughs> go to the wound. You're in. Far sight's going to go. He's got no friends left. <gasps> Look at that. No. All five. Two, four, five. AP minus, I've got two up save, but it's going to be AP minus two at least, isn't yeah. it? So four plus invulnerable save on five dice. I need an absolute miracle. And now's the time to grab the eight miller dice. <laughs> Let's try and save the, the last patch round. Come on. Oh, come on. Give me strength. Blocked those. Two make it through. Four wounds left dead. Come on, reroll. 50-50. 60% chance on the Xenos dice. No! <laughs> we live. We will swing that dawn blade at least once before sunrise. Two wounds left. It's a dark day, a red day. The other two knobs. The other two knobs now going into the broadside. A sneaking, sneaking orcs. I thought we had them. Uh, what do I need to wind you? It's not, maybe not twos. We're tough enough. If you give us your strength, we are coming at toughness six this time. Uh, so three. Three. All right. Two make it through. Two. Minus two. Four ups. Blocked one. Two wounds taken. Drop down to three left. Down to the ripping out. Yeah. Uh. He gets a fair chunk now because he's on the on the charge with the bog. Yeah. So he gets an extra four on top of his four that he has with the power clock. So on twos. Nine six. Six is a good. Max roll a few ones, which you'll then recycle. So drop one. Some Strength. difference between orc shooting and orc close combat. Eleven, three then. Eleven. 
Orcs don't mind. Four. Minus orcs two, two, orcs will happily let the tower have a shooting phase if they get a close combat phase. So four minus two, two damage. Four ups, we're going to die. Oh, maybe not blocked them all. Oh, above average. Minus two. Yeah, two ups, save base. Four ups. Blocked, yeah, I've done it. Oh, wait, hang on. Hang on, devastating. Devastating on one of them. Yeah. So two will go through. Yeah. One win left. No, not good enough. <sighs> oh, squig. Squig. Oh, I... Really, I'm remembering stuff now. I haven't remembered to use the squig for about five years ago. <laughs> Hooligan is called. Surely not. Add that one back in. Oh, recycle the ones. Strength five. The orcs eight. Mike's ones. <laughs> one uh, wound. One wound. No. Minus one. No, AP on the roll. Oh, just don't roll her. Oh, oh we passed. We're okay. All right. Woof, woof. Hasn't gone through. Uh, we hold. It's not the end of the world. I mean, God, dear. I mean, stripped away the front line here. Uh, so devastating stuff. All right, with these combats. Those those perhaps are the tougher combats. Mike can uh, move on to uh, the next one. Bikes across here. Yeah. Uh, power claw attacks coming in against the hammerhead. <clears throat> this is the uh, the knob for the bikers. Yeah, so raise. No sixes this time. Strength 10. Toughness 10. Fours. Just wait. Nothing coming through. Okay, armor holds. Just checking, yeah, toughness 10. And the rest of them are equipped with choppers. Uh, the other model from that squad before it's wiped out is Dylan Moore. Uh, one of the uh, autarchs been removed from play. Choppers hitting on twos. Twos. Sixes late up the ones. Nice. Come on. Two. So I'll drop one. Okay. Two. Yeah. Okay. And then we're looking at your total strength on the charge. Will only be a five. So sixes. Sixes. Sixes are good. I can see two. And minus one. Minus one. So I think we could start on a two. No, we don't. All right. So uh, wound taken. Death Killer War Track. Three, uh, strength 11. Nice. Nice, all of them. Four, minus two, two damage. Fives. Three make it three. Six two damage. damage. Yeah, six. Nice, dropping down to seven. That's good, ripping. That's uh, Zog doing all right on this flank. Storm boys have done their attacks and wiped out the warriors uh, across there. So momentum still going with the orcs. Now looking at uh, orc boys of their attacks against the crisis battlesuit teams. So actually going with the storm boys first. Uh, the knob has a power clock. Force. Strength ten. Twos. One makes it three. Minus two, two damage. Minus two will switch to a four plus invulnerable save for the shield generator, which holds. Come on, got a hold. Need some success over in that corner. It's light stuff that the orcs have. There's going to be a lot of attacks coming through. The choppers. Threes. Something else about the battle suits I'm observing. Two lots of anti tank. Perhaps mix and match. So one anti tank, but one equipped with like the flamer options, try and burn your way out of close combat and against hordes and so on. It's not just about anti armor, having a mixed array of weapons available. What's your toughness? Toughness five. Four. Then. Yeah, it's a cold star commander. He's not going to offer me any kind of help here. Six. Six at minus one. Yeah. Four ups. Yeah, three wounds taken. So three wounds can go on one of the models. Six wound models, so we hold. Yeah, onto the boys squad next. On power clock. Yeah, uh, fours. Oh, threes. Uh, twos. One comes through. Uh, we'll take the invent save. 
Come on, hold. No, goes through. Two damage. So two more wounds to add. Not quite enough to take that model down. So six wounds in total. So two more wounds to add. And I'll just pick those up. Right, I'll just add those there. The model may well drop here because Mike's got a lot of uh, chopper attacks. Mm -hmm. The squad's taken damage. They, they lost some casualties when they had to disembark. Six models. Six and then six extra for the wall. The Threes. All these ones. Yeah. Sorry, just Thanks. a point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And one six. That's some extreme. One six and like ten ones. There is an imbalance oh, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Fours. Yeah, it's half enough, it's half enough, but uh, it's a good recovery roll. There's about a dozen. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Four ups. Don't know if you've rolled well enough here. It blocks those. Uh, it's going to slay that model. Yeah. And you've just done enough to slay the second orange head model from that squad. Yeah, him. So you can go as well. Yeah, and then four of the uh, regular drone models can go that accompanied them as well. All of a sudden, casualties starting to mount up here for the tower. I was on <coughs> start of the turn. Two models, Mike had slain. Four. <laughs> but it's, it's shifted round now significantly. And again, bear in mind, tactically, Mike's strong on the table. So here, four power claws. Fours. Two. What? That's 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 what it is, Mike. Two ones, two sixes. The sixes, eight of the ones. <laughs> Twos. <laughs> Let's do it again. Two ones, five and six. Not this time, Mike. Just mm. for hitting. Uh, so we'll try and block here on fours. Block both. Let's make sure we got that right. We've got it right. They have a built-in four plus invulnerable save. Yeah, the Sunforge configuration, built in 4 plus and vulnerable so You don't choose to give them shield generators here, they just, they get it or they don't. So, nine normal boys. Yeah. Huge heap of attacks. I'm seeing battle suits surviving. We can kick back a little bit. Uh, three. Let's see if he's done it again. This is really interesting. So to count up your number number of ones that you have, and we'll count up number of sixes. It should be, on average, the same. This will tell us if Mike really does have a problem. <laughs> Just picking out the ones. It'll be fascinating to see this result. So I've only got one, two, three, four. Yeah, so Mike's got rolled four sixes and seven ones. Seven ones, yeah. You do there is there's something there is something wrong there, Mike. I do feel sorry for you. It's mm. actually a condition. Um but what to call it <laughs> we don't know. I don't know. Dice I don't know. dice rolling imbalance. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Michael in the group chat has actually commented that I need to burn incense. Yeah, he watched uh, Michael on the group, um, Michael Fry, he watched a string of battle reports back to back and then really saw the phenomenon uh, there going from one game to the next that Mike is plagued, like a cloud hanging over him from one, one game to the next. We, d we just don't know what to do. If you know a cure, let us know in the comment section below. Some people have suggested burning the dice, uh, but the problem could be deeper than that. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody wants to send enchanted dice... Yes, yes, new dice. <laughs> oh, I'm so... Fours. Fours. <laughs> Look at all these ones. And I just... <laughs> We've got eight ones and about two sixes. Done it again. Oh, seriously. Right. Anyway... We're looking for two, four, six, eight, ten. ten. At minus one. It's, it's minus one. It's yeah. going to push me to the four plus. So I'm rolling below average now. 
think it's contagious. Seven. So it's enough to slay a whole orange head model with his two drones, and then enough to put a wound on another. Alright, so we can absorb the damage. Not too bad. Could have been a lot worse. When you're all at once. We'll roll back here uh, with the tower. A bit of kicking to do. Uh, not too much. So combat's resolved. Cross here. Uh, killed a bike with broadsides, actually. Put some wounds on another. Uh, nothing with those. Killed two boys with the commander and the battle suit. Uh, no hits coming through from him. Haven't done far sight yet. So, surely we'll go for the Dawn Blade with the strike ability. Four attacks and in twos. Dedicated to Longbow BB. All hit. Strength 10. But toughness 6, right? Mm -hmm. Three to wound. Come on, get out of Fabric 2. Dawnblade strikes the armor. Two make it through. AP minus two. Two saves of four plus. Each one is damage three. Can he bring one down? Yep. He does. Blocked one though. Mike's blocked one. Uh, so one bodyguard slain. <clears throat> uh, it's Mike James here brought down. Uh, but two remain and they'll protect Grog here. So well done to the Orcs. Uh, protecting their war bosses. Twice over actually. So bodyguard duty. Really good from the Orcs here in this game. That's combat's resolved here. The tower line has been smashed into, our reserves have been smashed into as well. Still, I think the tower have caused more damage, just with the legacy of their shooting in this game. Uh, but what the orcs have done is seized the middle ground, and then have kept the tower back here and pushed like a green tide, running all the way around the edge of the board, uh, keeping the tower at bay. Very interesting. It also makes me think, another observation, is like a tower third wave. So if this kind of thing happens, you start dropping stuff mm -hmm. in across there. Something to think about as well. Perhaps the versatility of smaller mobile uh, three-man squads of, of uh, deep strike units coming in uh, for the middle stage of the game something to think about as well for the tower uh, line has been pinned back okay so end of turn points coming through five points of primaries that was for uh, no prisoners the 17 points of primaries as well it gives mike a grand total of 27 points here at the end of turn two tower on a measly seven points uh, choosing to hold back and soften up the orcs, which the Tau did very effectively. Mike then sees the middle ground. Uh, Tau uh, have then shot again, causing further damage. Then Mike had enough resources to charge in multiple places across the line. Also to turn and deal with the Tau reserves coming in. Uh, it's, uh, it's meant that the Tau have been kept off the objectives here. And the orcs have been able to keep the points flowing in. And as we're going to turn three, middle stage of the game, the Tau aren't near these objectives. The orc plan... Uh, it's, it's worked really, really well. We're going to the third turn of the game. Let's see what the tower can do in this desperate situation. All right, so turn three for the tower. Very tricky business indeed. Cards drawn, extend battle lines continues, and then capture enemy outpost is the other. Uh, I'm try and stay in close combat and, and, and blast my out of trouble. Uh, it's not ideal, so remaining close combat across here. Holding. Uh, from what we can read... It seems like you can still observe and spot whilst in close combat. Correct us if we're wrong, uh, but it doesn't seem to be. The restrictions are uh, like battle shocked units, which I have found battle shocked on some units across here. It's the broadside, so the wounds it's taken has failed. The commander squad across the other side has failed as well. They all remain in close combat to shoot. Shifting across with these, the hammerhead swung around 10 inches to shoot, maybe, or try and go for the charge. As and then remaining in close combat, remaining in close combat, try and gun down the bodyguard. I'd slight shuffle with these and holding with these. We're going to shooting phase next for the tower. So pressed ahead with tower firepower, desperate situation for them. Uh, firing across with these into the bikes to cause casualties, just two left. Then uh, firepower from far sight did do well, took out the two bodyguard models, they've both been removed from players. It's Amy Yara. Midnight Miniatures removed. So it is a face-off now. Uh, it's Farsight versus Grog de Whopper. Firing into close combat. Or firing here uh, into close combat. It's a vehicle model. So I've got a lot of vehicle keyword models are able to carry on shooting in close combat. Took out two of the uh, bodyguard models here from this squad. But crucially, uh, it's Gut Ripper still alive, still fighting away. Uh, then refuse to fire into this. I want to try and charge. Try and get onto that objective if we can. Either with this squad... Uh, and or the hammerhead as well. 
and then shooting into close combat brought down some boys from that squad and a couple of casualties caused across the other side but crucially the tower remained pinned down we're going to charges a couple and the ongoing close combat okay so charges going ahead come on reroll this one but failed but this one did go ahead seven inches you reckon rolled an eight so they've made it in it's good oc control on these it looks like the tower might better grab this objective and finally we're going to combat resolution but one charging unit uh, then Michael get to pick a close combat and crucially I think he's going to go for this one I have a chance to try and uh, bring fast sight down so we moved in actually managed to cause a wound uh, dropping down to six wounds left hurrah Mike can pick a combat I wonder which yep sure I Grog the Whopper four attacks can we survive I've got to survive everything that Mike throws at me if he can get a hit and then a devastating wound it's all over yep and I really wanted the Howling so I'm going to do the fives explosion. oh no and they're hitting me on twos. Yeah. Oh, quick, check, 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 check. <laughs> yeah, there's a stratagem for zero CP, so I could use like a command reroll for zero CP. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. Come on. Every I wanted him to roll ones, it's now, but he hasn't. He's in fact popped two extra. <sighs> right. Strength 13? No, strength 12. Right. So for five, two's to wind. Two's. One six is all finished. Oh, I can see two sixes. Oh! Devastating wounds, nothing I can do. Far sights removed from play. If I had have struck you back, you would have used the Dawn Blade extra sharp. <clears throat> twos. Threes. It would have been two coming through at minus two. So it would have been two four ups. Blocked one, one three one. damage. We would have survived. How many wound model are you? Seven. Seven? Oh man. Not a chance. All right. So far sights removed from play. My tower won't like that. All right. So combat's resolved. I put a few wounds onto the bikers <clears throat> across here. Uh, gut Ripper just chopped the wound with his bodyguard actually chopped the last wound away from the broadside uh, then across here we've uh, managed to chip off a wound from the vehicle uh, and push further in onto the objective uh, across here wounds stacking up not enough to bring down one of the crisis battlesuit team members uh, the bodyguard has been stripped away though from commander ghost side uh, there along uh, the orc back line so that's combat's resolved uh, here as the tower desperately fights away to try and uh, relieve themselves from this orc assault. Both sides running out of steam, I sense, at this stage. Uh, but the orcs have kept the tower at bay, and that works nicely in their favour. Yeah, we're just drawing cards here for Mike's turn three. Behind enemy lines? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's good. It's brilliant. Uh, I think Mike's done enough. My point's coming through at the end of my turn three is, is feeble. There's no way I'm set up on turn four uh, to recover, and therefore the game's beyond the tower here. Mike's done enough uh, with the Orcs. Unbelievable. I, I seriously thought, oh, this is turn one. I thought, oh, we're going to have a bit of a one or two turn uh, battle here. But the Orcs just, I don't know, the weather, the storm, they took the damage. The casualties were really heavy. Uh, but they managed to get themselves into position just about. Managed to launch a WAG across the line. Uh, they managed to about face with some units and deal with the towers they landed as well. Kept the tower back and they raked the points in. As simple as that. Points coming through for the tower. Another two points holding on to home objective. Just not good enough. And so if the tower are going to develop a force here for 10th edition with the new codex, uh, it's going to have to be something revolving around uh, either doing really well at grabbing objectives at turn 3, 4 and 5. So having the units to do it, like late arriving reserves or very fast units that can move around. As, or being able to aggressively go after objectives straight away and grab them, which I think is going to be very difficult. So tricky stuff for the tower. The firepower potency is there for sure, uh, but it's not just about the gunning down enemy units. It's about manoeuvring, getting into position on the board. Uh, so two points picked up for primaries. No one are good enough. I've got five points as well coming through for extend battle lines. Uh, that gave us a total of 14 points. Mike, before he even starts his turn three, is on 27 uh, and then he would have picked up points holding to that one. And there's one knob left from Firepower to hold on to that central objective as well. Still on his home objective. That's a dozen points to come through.
plus the secondary is being drawn, it would uh, present a total that the tower could never catch up with. And therefore, uh, we will grant the orcs a uh, notable victory here against the tower. Their flashy, shiny new codex, the orcs have stomped all over it as per usual. Uh, they don't go, go by the script here on the channel. It does mean the Ripper will live to fight another day, and he can quite rightly so continue on uh, with his King Slayer campaign. So I was just. That's what Mike was doing off camera. He's rolling up Battle Shocks. He passed on that one, so he would have got the points. They didn't need to check anyway. Yeah, this, uh, just to point out, the Storm Boys unit sitting on the objective, points raking in once again. Uh, and even if um, you struggle with points, what am I going to do on turn four? Just don't have the don't have the resources available. But I know for a fact the Tower in their Codex do have units that can move quickly, uh, that can deep strike in, the use of battle suits and so on, uh, units that can uh, pull away at close combat and swing around quickly. So there's all sorts of remedies here. Uh, certainly a scouting mission here for the tower uh, in this game. They've been taught a lesson going forwards by the Orcs. Uh, the potency in this Orc list, though the Orcs can smack hard, and despite the damage that they suffered, they can still uh, strike so hard on the table. So encouraging to see. Look forward to seeing the Orcs in the league, and look forward to seeing uh, how the tower develop in the days ahead as well. If you're a channel member, you can keep a lookout. I reckon I'm going to go, and go ahead and produce... Uh, a fresh new list for the tower, the light and the new codex. You can look forward to that coming through uh, over on channel membership and hopefully some tower games of an adjusted list, perhaps some new units uh, for them as well. Keep a look out for more battle reports on the channel. A uh, big thank you to everyone that supports us on Patreon at Silver Level. Jason Martinez, Marcus Olsen, Gross Caldwell and Miniature Matt uh, there at Silver Level. Great game. Thanks for watching and tune in next time. Ball on that's all. Yeah, before you go, as units of the game, Mike's going to give it courteously to both war bosses. Both had value, worked together, gone for a sort of a, a tight double pronged attack here in this game. Worked mm. out really well. Uh, for the Tau, their initial highly impressive firepower, the Hammerheads. Love to keep those on the list. One of my favourite units of the Tau. Both of them doing really well. Some great firepower from them. That's units of the game for both sides. Mm.